Good afternoon, and here we have Jair Isaguirre with us today with Sabo Latino Global. He's from Peru. And we're going to be talking about immigration, and we're going to talk about his inspiration behind his poetry, which is, you know, directed towards the challenges and, you know, issues that are faced by folks today that are um, undocumented. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good, Monica. Thank you for that introduction. I'm happy to be here with yeah. you. Well, I'm glad that you took the time to be here. Um, Jaid has, you know, educated me and uh, opened my eyes to certain issues that are out there um, today. And as you know, we have uh, a lot of issues today with uh, reform and immigration uh, Obama is addressing. Um, but still, things have to be resolved. There's no uh, permanent resolution. Um, as we were discussing earlier, there are three types of categories of undocumented immigrants that uh, Jaid um, has in mind and has been, you know, talking about. He has a Facebook web page. What is the name of that Facebook web page? Well, um, I recently established a uh, Facebook page, uh, which is uh, American and undocumented, which is pretty much it just talks about some of the uh, social issues concerning mm -hmm. some. Um, Mostly um, young adults and more mature adults that are that range between the ages of 20 and late 30s that have been in this country for pretty much over 20 and 30 years, but yet are undocumented because of the the immigration issues that we have today. Okay, so it's a perfect platform for people to just get an open dialogue right. going and talking about to ask any questions they might have or any right. concerns, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, you know, do you find a lot of people posting any comments out there? Um, mostly not, not really. I'm, I'm mostly been finding um, people either um, directly uh, messaging me through the Facebook um, okay. inbox, um. or if not, um, I've been meeting people, you know, on mm -hmm. the street um, yeah. that I know through little social cir mm -hmm. circles, and we've kind of been having, you know, these kind of mm -hmm. conversations. Yeah, it's a racial that. social awareness of yes. the concerns and challenges today. Yes. Uh, okay, so let's go into the three types of categories. You have one, those who come here as children and have been here like for 20 more years, an example, Correct. right? Correct. Then you have two, those that come here on a visa and they overstay and they may come as tourists, but then they don't go back. Right, the Correct. overstay slash tourists. Then right. you have number three, which would be recent immigrants coming within the last year. So these are three groups of people that are facing similar issues. Correct. So um, let's go to the first one. Those who come here as children and they've been here, you know, 15, 20 years. Right. Now that that first um, that first uh, social class is pretty much the class of immigrants that I belong to. Um, I've been in this country for pretty much over 30 years, and I'm still un undocumented based on the problems that we're having with um, Congress, you know, the government not being able to come to a resolution with what they want to do with immigration reform. Now, um, if most of the people out there that know um, the laws out there would say, oh, well, why didn't you qualify for DACA? Now, the problem with DACA mm -hmm. is that um, there was only an age age mm -hmm. limit till 30, and when the law just passed, um, mm -hmm. I just turned 32. Yeah. So just to correct, DACA is, uh, it stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Yes, yes. Okay, DACA, just yes. to clarify, because yes. I didn't know what it meant before either. Right. So you f fall into that category. Right, correct. Okay. Correct. All right. And then as far as the second group of people, the visa overstays? Yes. Um, the second group is um, mostly like people that came here with, with visas. Um, mm -hmm. It's a tourist visa. Um, I think it was for maybe um, a month or so. And they pretty much decided for whatever reason they decided to, mm -hmm. to stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's normal. I mean, you come to right. this country. Unfortunately, there's issues depending where you're coming from, you know, like most people that come to this country, they want a better life, Correct. you know, they're afraid to go back and, Correct. you know, so they take the chance. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And then the other group, the recent immigrants that are coming within the last year, what, what do you think is different between that group and the first group? 
Well, um, this this is the group that pretty much has been causing most of the debate, you know, where it's it's causing a, a great division, you know, where people are becoming pro immigrant immigration and and mm -hmm. and um and non 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 supportive of of the whole um mm -hmm. immigration reform. And the issue that's happening is that with this this third um classification, I guess you can say, the problem is is mm -hmm. mostly where they just pretty much got into the country maybe about a year or so or five years ago and um, they're trying to you know assimilate you know they're trying to become productive productive mm -hmm. citizens but everyone thinks that we can't we pretty much all fit the mold mm -hmm. and we don't and I guess this is where all the confusion mm -hmm. is mostly about yeah, like, like a lot of people I'm sorry to interrupt you no, I'm just okay. saying that a lot of people feel that the 11 million or these these this percentage of numbers a lot of people um, are a little bit afraid of the numbers and, and all these all these things because they feel that oh well the 11 millions are people that just got here yeah. five years ago mm -hmm. and pretty much with me you know, you're talking to a person, a living person, not a statistic or a percentage. Yeah. We're not all. In the, we're not. We're people. We're not numbers. Right. Mm -hmm. That 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 we're not. We're not part of that mm -hmm. that third percentage. We're mostly the first percentage where we've been here. You know, mm -hmm. for over thirty years. Yeah. This is our your home. Right. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it's not becoming. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not a political issue. It's becoming an mm -hmm. inhumane. A hu yeah. inhumane issue. So, okay, so how do you feel with, with the direction our president is taking with this now? Um, I agree with the direction of President Obama and what he's he's doing. Um, I don't I don't want to at the end of all this. I think Obama, if he was here, he would agree that I don't think I'm not going to um, glamorize or give credit just to one man mm -hmm. i think that Absolutely. our i think that our entire government mm -hmm. at the end of the day is going to do the right thing mm -hmm. concerning God immigration mm -hmm. you know i think that you know it's funny i don't really think that oh, even obama himself wants all the credit or he's going to get or the credit mm -hmm. or he's looking at himself that he's mm -hmm. like the champion concerning immigration i think in the long run i think even as immigrants you know, all of us are going to praise our government for doing mm -hmm. the right thing, not just yeah. Obama or... Keeping doing the right thing. Right. Okay. So, I mean, obviously there are many challenges that undocumented folks face today. Well, number one being finding a job. Right. You know, job stability. You know, you have families to support that depend on you. You know, um, one of the things that we were talking about was turnover. So what do you experience? I, I wanted to come from your standpoint. Today. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate you um, um, raising, um, rising the um, the topic of uh, finding finding work. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have these um, really um, fault like uh, falsehoods about how the what an immigrant goes through to find mm -hmm. to find work. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, one thing I can honestly tell you, even through my own experiences, is that. People say, "Oh, well, you're taking you're taking our jobs, right?" Mm -hmm. And when and when I specifically, you know, when I have these conversations with these people, and I say, "Well, mm -hmm. what what jobs are you talking about? Are you talking mm -hmm. about co these corporate jobs? Are you talking about the high end jobs? Because for those high end jobs, mm -hmm. you need, you know, we live in America. We live in an American system, meaning that you have to have a social security number. Mm -hmm. So I don't qualify for that job." Mm -hmm. Thus, what you're saying is not is not true. Mm -hmm. You know, the it's corporate, for a different category. Yeah, of that jobs. category. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. the only job you know that people that don't have documents, meaning don't don't have a social security number, and we all know that even to get an ID, a driver's license, or anything like that, you need a social security number. So, mm -hmm. not only do you not have you don't have anything. You don't have, you don't have any ID. You don't have a social security number. You don't have anything. So how can you apply for these jobs that mm -hmm. quote unquote were taking? Yeah, so now, having, filling out a regular job application, one of the things that are required is a social security number. Right. Now the jobs that are only left left over mm -hmm. are the jobs that most people don't want to do. And what are mm -hmm. those jobs? Most of them are in the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. Most of them are in the, like, in the construction um, mm -hmm. industry. 
and um, they're back breaking jobs mm -hmm. that absolutely no one wants no one wants to do now um, with that with that said we're not taking any jobs we're just taking the jobs that are pretty Left much over, available. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. yes so uh, what do you do for a living right now well right now what I'm doing is um, I work at a restaurant right now okay. I work as a server and slash busboy okay right so even with my extensive amount of English, yeah, or, I mean you are a very my, educated person, right? Or my education, yeah. I have um, my background is in is in graphic design and in, mm -hmm. and in advertising, and it doesn't it doesn't even matter. Like mm -hmm. right now, all of us, we all well know that all of us are graded through our credit, mm -hmm. you know, through our social security number. Through it, it doesn't even matter as long mm -hmm. as I don't have a social security number. I don't have an identity in this country. I don't it's have. Like you a don't voice have an opportunity. This, I don't have an opportunity. Yes, yeah. and that's important. And that's you how have that to be able. I mean, obviously, you want to dive into what your passions are, just like right. everybody else here. Right. You know, we right. want to do something that's fulfilling and make a difference, and where your talent flies. So you know, obviously, it's not where you're at now. The problem is in this country. How do we move forward? How do we get there? Right. right? Right. So that's a, that's the question. And yes, right. And and through mm -hmm. the opportunity, that's how it's becoming a social mm -hmm. issue. Yeah, and, not, and by not, the reform that you can get that social security number, that you can get that opportunity to get that job would benefit our society right. for one, because you could be contributing to the economy and be, you know, um, you know, fulfilling what it is that you were trained in, you know. Exactly. It's just better quality of life. Exactly. You know, it's and like, that's what the American dream is, is about, you know, doing something that you love, being able to provide for your family and provide more opportunities for our children and those, you know, that come after us. Right. Right. And, and, and not to be corny or anything, like if I could quote, you know, John F. Kennedy, John F. Kennedy said, you know, not ask not what you can do for your country, you know, but not, not ask what you can get from your country, you but what you can do, you know, for your country. Exactly. So that's and you exactly definitely can contribute, just like all these other folks. I mean, I have to say that, you know, even from the people that do the landscaping, there's always some people there that are undocumented, that mm -hmm. are working really hard and they're the ones doing the work, you Correct. know. And I'm sure that is a struggle for them. And who knows what they get paid? We only we know that it's not a lot of money. Right. So. And the funny thing is, um, I had an opportunity to work with you know people that were undocumented too. That you know, I I I am a person that speaks both both languages, English yeah, and that's Spanish. A, that's a very good point. Right. And yeah. you know, I I got their their input on it, and it was so it was so humbling to me because. You know, these people like never complained, never complained, were always, always on thankful, time. on time, mm -hmm. always worked hard, always were willing to, to do the extra thing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's like, for me, it was like, it was Very just such humbling. a humbling, yeah, such exactly. a humbling, humbling experience. And mm -hmm. I feel that America, um, if they were to do the right thing mm -hmm. because of that, those, those, that type of character you know in this social class mm -hmm. that of course you know the country is is going to reach another height of greatness absolutely mm -hmm. and you know i pray that it does we do get there and it will, we will get future. there and it will yeah. and it will it will happen it mm -hmm. will it will happen i just mm -hmm. feel that um like i said very um, positive i like that right right i just feel that at mm -hmm. the end of everything i feel that the country is going to do the right thing yeah you heard it here well, thank you for that. And uh, you, with that, Jair is going to leave you that with that uh, food for thought. And uh, we would welcome your comments. Uh, you could blog it on my, you know, on my website um, or on my Facebook or Twitter. But one last thing we'd like to leave you with is some poetry. And I, I didn't mention, but Jair yes. is, a, is a very talented poet, a very passionate poet. And, you know, he goes behind what he believes in. And he's in all honesty um he backs it up so he's going to recite a poem called destructively beautiful, beautiful yes right 
Now, um, you guys are probably out there saying, oh, well, how do you go from immigration to, to poetry? Well, a lot of the poetry, um, for me, poetry... Politically is, influenced. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's a good outlet. It's a good outlet for me to kind of just um, kind of turn to when I feel a little bit frustrated with, you know, what's going on with immigration. Mm -hmm. This is me just kind of turning all that anger into more of a positive positive force and um sometimes i mm -hmm. think that that's this is, admirable right it's yeah. this is me just having a creative outlet mm -hmm. you yeah. know and um pretty much and if you could sell these poems that would even be better that, that would be, yeah that would <laughs> that would be great but i don't i don't do it i don't do actually it for, publish for, a book you know honestly yeah. if i were you with your talent i would compile put a compilation of my poetry together uh -huh. and go out there i mean all right honestly, well when i have by your words when i have we'll my put, first we'll put some out there 99 <laughs> cents on sabor latino global download right. a poem Right. Well, when I have my first book, I, you know, you have to um, welcome me back and so I can talk Absolutely. about my book. Absolutely. So you heard it here. When he publishes his book in the near future with those popular, passionate poems, you're going to find it right here. Okay. So let me begin with the, with the poem. Um, the poem is called Destructively Beautiful. I hate watching you. I hate how your emotions change like the different days of the week. I'd hate how I don't know what you're thinking. I'd hate how you never let me finish my sentences. I'd hate how so, I hate how you're so many different people and I never know which one is talking to me. I hate how you cry because of the things you do to yourself. I'd hate how I hold you, how I look at you, and how you make me smile. I'd hate your laughter and how it makes me laugh. I hate how you looked so sexy last night in that black dress, and I couldn't stand to share you with the world. I'd hate your walk and how the rhythm of your curves sing to me. I'd hate how, even in the dark, I can still see you. I hate how we dance to no music, but we were held together listening to the beat of our hearts. I hate that we never got to do the things that we wanted to do or say the things that we wanted to say. I hate that I never got a chance to tell you that I was falling in love with you. I hate that I don't hate you at all. And all the things that I find destructive about you make you perfect, makes you destructively beautiful. Thank you. Interesting. That, that was pretty deep. I, I appreciate <laughs> that. Destructively beautiful and destructively passionate. I will have to say, Diane, that that woman is a lucky woman if she only knew how destructively <laughs> beautiful she is. Uh, well, thank, thank you. you for sharing that. Thank if you, you want to, you know, hear any more of his poems, um, I, what where could they go find them? I mean, good. Are you going to share them on your Facebook page? Um, yes. Um, you can add me on Facebook. Um, first name J A I R, last name uh, I Z A G U I R R E, and you can find me on Facebook. And most of my poetry is on there. So. Okay, but not on your other page. The no, American, not the um, not the not not the American and undocumented page. Yeah. That is specifically yeah. just for um, mm -hmm. immigrants. But I would issue. encourage folks, you know, if if you ha if you're facing an issue like that, right. you know, feel free to post a question, share information, even a link that could you know provide you know some awareness to the people out there that are you know struggling with this i mean this is the only way that the problems are going to get addressed and the more you hear about it the more you raise awareness about it the more change can you know come forth right as as human beings if i can if i can personally leave on a on a on a positive note you as human beings always have the right to voice change the mm -hmm. only thing that things are going to change is by you voicing how you feel and using using your voice in a creative a creative mm -hmm. mean your power is your voice exactly mm -hmm. exactly thank you thank you